Shout out to G-Man Boxing. All right, people, review of the week time. Let's see how long we get going at this one. Last week was like a half hour. I don't want to do a half hour review of the week. I want to keep it nice and compact. So we'll start with the fights of the weekend. Basically, we saw Anthony Sims Jr. make his comeback on Friday in Dubai. We also saw Mike Perez on the undercard make his comeback. I don't really talk about them. Both guys got knockouts. Also had uh, Austin Trout on that card, one EUD. Not really much to be said about that card. It really kind of went under the radar. It was an MTK show. Not really much else to say kind of regards that. Fight Camp. I already touched on Fight Camp. I'll just say it again. The actual card was crap. Crap. With a capital C. Main event was good. Main event was good. Joshua Boazzi. That fight will do Joshua Boazzi the world of good. It really will. He knows where he needs to improve. Eddie Hearn is talking about Dimitri Bivol next. Now... I don't understand why Eddie Hearn is in such a rush to put Joshua Boazzi in there with Dimitri Bivol. The only thing I can think of is, is that Boazzi's team maybe know, maybe Boazzi has weaknesses in some areas, maybe the chin, could, could be something. And maybe Eddie Hearn knows that as well and he's thinking, you know what, I don't want him to lose to someone he shouldn't lose to. You know, uh, what I mean is, imagine he puts him in there. Like, I've heard the name Maxim Vlasov there. No, I wouldn't put Boazzi in with him. He would, I'd be picking him straight away over Joshua Boazzi. Too big, too strong, hits too hard. I, I think that's a very, and he's very big. That's a very poor ma matchmaking, putting him in there at Maxim Vlasov. I wouldn't do that. In terms of, like, if you put him in there with someone like that, yeah, like, he'd probably lose. Rather lose for a world title where you can rebuild them maybe is what Eddie Hearn is thinking I don't know but put them in there against someone like Vlasov I heard the name Marcus Brown mentioned now that would be a fight if I was promoting Joshua Boazzi I would take that risk with him I'll tell you why because Brown is tall he is athletic he is fast but I don't trust his chin at all I think he's extreme I've seen him dropped loads of times he's a very dirty fighter Marcus Brown but I think that some people be to be mystified by his speed. And what I mean is, I don't mean the fighters. The fighters do, of course. But I think people from the outside look at it and look at Mark when they see his athleticism and his speed. And they think, oh, wow, this guy's amazing. I never rated Marcus Brown. I wasn't, well, I was. I was surprised when he lost to Jan Pascal. I didn't think he'd lose that. But I definitely didn't think he'd, he'd get a world title. I thought someone would turn him over sooner or later. I didn't think it'd be Pascal. But I was like, someone's going to turn this guy over because he's just... He's afraid to get hit, and when he does get hit, he doesn't react well to it. Maybe that would be a fight where Boazzi would like that. Maybe Boazzi would feel, you know what, if I can land a good, solid shot on him, he's not got great survival skills either. Boazzi might be onto something there. In terms of Bivol, I've said it once, I'll say it again. Bivol won't be able to miss Boazzi. He will have a field day. Boazzi doesn't move his head at all off center line. Bivol will have no problem finding him. I just think that that is just wrong. Why... Why is Eddie Hearn in such a rush to get that fight made? I don't know. I really don't know. Um, I I just couldn't I just couldn't see that fight happening. Couldn't see it. if they really wanted a risk. I know he's a big puncher, but Kovalev is probably there for the taking now at this stage. If you could get, but he'd want serious money to be fair. But maybe a Kovalev, maybe just maybe. In terms of the rest of the card, there's really not much to say about it. It was what it was. The card was crap. I don't really have much else to add to it. In America, um, Jason Franco beat uh, Jason Maloney, or Joshua Franco beat Jason Maloney, I should say. To be expected, you know, he did win the first fight. People talk about the second fight being controversial because of all the stuff. Yeah, look, I, I remember the second, I remember seeing the highlights of it, but the first fight, Franco won. And I thought he'd win this one, and he did, in my opinion. So that didn't surprise me. Also on that card was Trey Lippy Morrison, son of Tommy Morrison. I don't know why Bob Aramis insisted on promoting him, because... He's so run of the... He's, he looks horrendous. right? We also saw Muhammad Ali's grandson. And he wore Muhammad Ali's shorts from the 60s. Which I thought was a nice little touch. I'll keep an eye on him. I'll have to keep an eye on him. You know, I'm obviously a massive fan of his grandfather. You know, I love Muhammad Ali. So I'll definitely be keeping an eye on him. In terms of the Casemiro cars. Oh boy. That, that fight was a joke. That really was a joke. When I watched it back this morning, I didn't watch the whole fight through, but I was just like, what the hell? 
was like, well, what the hell was Rigo doing? He got hurt in the first round, and after that, he just didn't want it. Just run around the ring, run around the ring, run around the ring, and that was it. You know, I, it just... That was just a disgraceful display from Guillermo Rigondeaux. Absolutely disgraceful from Rigondeaux in terms of how he performed in that fight. So Casemiro rightfully got that decision, in my opinion, because Rigo didn't win that fight. He didn't deserve to win that fight. In terms of the other fights we had, obviously Virgil Ortiz. I didn't do a post-fight review on it, but Virgil Ortiz versus Me Machine, Igas Cavalascus, great fight. Hell of a good fight. Virgil Ortiz is the business. You know, he really is. Cavalascus said post-fight that his jab is better than Crawford's, and he has more power than Terence Crawford. Now, that could be just him trying to blow smoke up Virgil Ortiz's arse, but I reckon there's some truth to that. Virgil Ortiz is a very good puncher, he's a very good finisher. He was hurt several times in this fight by Capalascus. But whenever he was hurt, he would fight fire with fire. He wasn't one of these, and he, he always looked calm under pressure, did Virgil Ortiz. Him and Jerome Boots Ennis, I mean, really, flip a coin, who would you rather? I, I think Boots Ennis, maybe it's his athleticism I prefer, but both guys are absolutely going to cause the welterweight division a world of problems. Both guys will. I'd love it if both guys would fight. Maybe not now, although I wouldn't be against it now. But maybe when both have world titles, I'd have improved a bit. But my God, these two are brilliant. I thought Virgil Ortiz looked very good in his fight. Clinical, devastating. When he got his guy hurt, he hurt him. When he was hurt, he retaliated. I was very impressed with Virgil Ortiz. In other news, Canelo Alvarez and Caleb Plant back on talks for November. So September day is gone. It's another year where Canelo's not fighting on Cinco de Mayo weekend. Or is that Mexican independent? I always get them mixed up. But either way, it's a Mexican holiday. Ain't going to happen. So now we're looking at November. Do I... I, I ah. Canelo Plant, I've said it once, I'll say it again. Canelo beats the living crap out of Plant. But we want to see Undisputed. I wouldn't mind seeing Undisputed. I'd rather see Bivol. But look, if it's Undisputed, I get it. I get the concept of that. We've seen other names be mentioned in Canelo, in, in terms of Canelo. Demetrius Andre. Now, I have heard several sources, several sources say that his next fight is being touted against, wait for it, wait for it. Jason Quigley. Oh my God. What the hell? Demetrius Andre. Five years ago fought Willie Nelson at 154 pounds. I thought he looked fantastic in that fight. He's never looked as good since. And his competition. With the exception of Liam Williams. Has been very below par. I mean. Jay Quigley really you want to fight him the guy went life and debt with Shane Mosey Jr a lot of people felt he lost that fight he doesn't belong anywhere near a world title Jay Quigley will get absent Jay Quigley quit against an ancient Torino Johnson that kind of sums up Jay Quigley no way he is going to get that. why do there's better opponents out there that Demetrius Andre could take on. Why in God's name be taken on a Jay Quigley? If in fact that's true. That is just absurd mismate, mismatch. Absurd. I mean really. I like Demetrius Andre. I think he's better than people give him credit for. But I can't defend shit like that. You're fighting Demetrius Andre? Or you're fighting Jay Quigley? Really? Jesus. Anyway. In more light hearted news. David Hay. Now, I've seen contrasting reports. I've seen some people say that it's a comeback. And others say it's an exhibition against this Joe Fontner guy. Now, this guy is a billionaire. He's basically one of David Hay's playboy mates. That's basically how you describe him. It seems to me to be an exhibition because it was originally on box rec. Now it's not. So I reckon it is an exhibition. The guy is 9 0 with 9 KOs, but he is going down the Christopher Lovejoy route and fighting absolute puddings. So he's just, and he hasn't fought since 2017. He fought nobody. Like literally no one with a pulse. I mean, I think one of the guys he fought, whose people name they recognize, was knocked out by Dex Spellman of all people. So he's been fighting absolute cabbages. 
so this is an exhibition i think that david hay even now even though he's riddled with injuries could probably knock this guy out without even trying without even meaning to do you know what sort of way you know when you see that where like they might just land a shot that's too hard and knock a guy out without even meaning to so there's that in other news, let's see what else we have in the world of boxing. Conor Ben versus Adrian Granadas has now been rescheduled for Mauricio Lara versus Josh Warrington too. So that's that's all right, you know. It's, it's it's an okay fight. As I said before, I'll say it again. I don't think we have the. If this is the same Granadas who fought Adrian Broner, he gives Ben problems. That's four years ago. I don't think we have that anymore. So look we'll see we'll make it out what you will but for my money i just don't think that conor ben's gonna have much trouble conor ben a lot of people are complaining that he's speaking very arrogant lately i don't like listening to conor ben interviews to be honest with you because i could never sit through one before like and I, uh, even when he was just in the the raw novice stage i used to not like his interviews i always thought that ben ben to me is always trying to come across as a hard ass and it's just it i find it just a bit cringe sometimes so i've never really been one for listening to conor ben this is a good little scrap but don't expect ben to be in any and this is eddie hearn saying to be in any 50 50 fights anytime soon it just ain't gonna happen so don't think we're gonna get a david avanesian fight or a cabalaskis fight after this ain't gonna happen ain't gonna happen manny pacquiao versus your dennis ugas will be shown on sky sports not pay-per-view which is good which is good, so we will get that fight. Um, well, I won't be getting it because I don't pay for Sky anymore. Um, so I will just find a way to watch that free of charge. <laughs> you know, free of charge. There you go. But um, yeah, no, that's on Sky. So if anyone does still pay for Sky, you will get that on Sky Sports. I wasn't surprised at all that Sky bought that. I mean, like, even if it had, if Spence had gone ahead, it would have been absolutely criminal. For a fight of that magnitude not to be picked up by a major network in the uk you know so i kind of had a feeling sky or bt would have bought that because i imagine imagine manny pacquiao versus spence imagine that fight had just happened and it was on fight network or fight tv that really would have been a slap in the face to the english fans because you've got a great great fight and your dennis ugas is still a good fight and you'd be putting that on a platform like that at least with sky it's on a major platform and i have no great love for sky but at least they're buying a good fight and it is a good fight you guess versus pacquiao herring versus stevenson shakur stevenson they reportedly signed for october 23rd uh i don't think that's going to be the most entertaining fight in the world best make no mistake about that but i would favor shakur stevenson in that fight i think that herring beat carl frampton and beat him in good fashion but frampton was beyond finished at that stage so I would go with Shakur Stevenson to win that fight. What else do we have? Eddie Hearn is stating that Dylan White now is being targeted for a fight in the UK. So they were talking about Jermaine Franklin in the US sometime in September. They were going to do it in a time to accommodate the UK. Seems like that's gone. And they're just going to do another fight with Dylan White in the UK. Potentially Chris Ariola. As I said, if anyone's due an easy fight, it's Dylan White. Um... I just wonder if that's going to be in the UK, will it be on the zone or will they do it on Sky pay per view? If they do it on Sky pay per view against Ariola, oh man, really? But if they do it on the zone, all right, fair enough. I'm, I'm, I won't even gripe at that. But yeah, Dylan White, so it looks like he's back in the UK. It looks like he's back in the UK. The British Boxing Board of Control have now ordered Lee McGregor versus Cash Farou next. Ain't going to happen next, I can't see it. Both guys are going down the world title roads. Nevertheless, nevertheless, it will still be interesting to see if we do get a rematch with those guys because I would love to see a rematch. The first fight was very good. I'd love to see a rematch between the two. So I would. Um, oh, I must point out as well, Nicola Hopewell, who I had on the channel there back on Wednesday, won her fight last night. Big up to her. Lastly, I'll end it on this. Andy Ruiz versus Charles Martin, now possible. Now possible for October. Martin is now work at Manny Robles, Andy Ruiz's former coach. Wow. Um, Martin versus Ruiz. I don't, don't mind that fight, actually. I think Martin's improved a hell of a lot over the last few years. Andy Ruiz definitely looked very shaky against Chris Ariola. I don't, I don't mind that fight. I wonder what happened to the Ortiz fight. Where's that gone? 
because it was all talk of Andy Ruiz versus Luis Ortiz next. I'd love to know what's happened there, why that fight's not being talked about. Anyone know, leave it in the comment section. I don't want this video to go on and on and on and on. <laughs> So I'm going to end it there. I hope you all enjoyed the video. I hope you all enjoyed me having the chat about it. I hope you have a great Monday leading on to a great week. And we all have nothing but good things coming our way. I know we all will. I know we all will. And if, if anyone doesn't send in someone that positive energy your way, I hope you have a great week. For now, lads and lassies, I'm going to leave it there. I'll talk to you. Peace.